Good morning, everyone. I am Dr. Yatunde Reeves, the proud principal of Baloo High School. I bring you greetings on behalf of the parents, students, faculty, and community at large. Welcome again. We are thrilled to have you here today. To give us the full Baloo Night welcome, I would like to introduce one of our outstanding graduating seniors, Mr. William Richardson. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Good morning. I want to start off saying that this is an honor to be uh, be able to speak at this event. Okay, I'm going to read this to you. This is a this. Okay, I'm going to read this. <laughs> Welcome to the brand new Baloo. My name is William Richardson. I'm a senior here at Baloo Senior High School. You all have chosen the right place. Baloo has been an amazing place for me to learn and grow. In fact, it has helped me to get to where I want to be. This fall, I will be attending the University of, Con of Connecticut on a full football scholarship. <laughs> Thank you. I play for the Knights football and basketball team. My experience here has, been, has inspired me to think about majoring in business with the emphasis on sports management. I am thankful for, my sta for the staff here. My coaches have exposed me to college and career opportunities I would have never known about. My teachers always encourage me to work hard and dream big. They have inspired me to lead. When I was 11 years old, I read a book called The Pack. Three young men make a promise and fulfill a dream. It's about three young men from Newark, New Jersey, who make a pact to break out of their situation and become doctors. This book has been a imp big impact on me and my success. It showed me that if I surround myself with positive people and work hard, I can achieve anything. Three days out of each week, I get up at 5 a.m. I go running. Because I believe, I believe that as a leader, you have to, hold on. I, because I believe that as a leader, you have to do more than average. I think about Nelson Mandela, one of my heroes, who fought for freedom and never gave up. And I think about Baloo, where I made memories I'll never forget. When I first stepped into the new Baloo, it was beautiful. My classmates feel the same way. We're so excited about the accomplishments this building. We're so, we're so excited, we are excited, about the accomplishments in this building, and we're up for the challenge. Now, it is my pleasure to introduce you to somebody who's bringing in the new Mayor, Mayor, Mayor Bowser. Well, good morning, everybody. Let's hear it for the new Baloo. Give the new Baloo a big round of applause. Congratulations, Chancellor. And I want to congratulate everybody involved in getting this beautiful school uh, to this point. And you heard from our student, the future UConn student, what it means to them to know that their city, their community, and their school district has invested in them. And I couldn't be more proud to stand here today uh, to help celebrate this new building. I also want to acknowledge and thank the chancellor for heeding the call that President Obama made to all of us. Um, and that call was, if we are to succeed as a nation, we have to have the best prepared workforce. If we are to succeed as a nation, we have to catch up with what other nations have done in investing in their children. And if we are to succeed as a community, we have to make sure that we have strong families and productive citizens. And the way to get there for us is to make sure that our young men and boys of color have great opportunities, have great supports, and a pathway to achieving everything that they're capable of. And so I'm proud uh, to work with the president, and I'm very pleased that our chancellor has spent, um, not just willy-nilly, but has spent time focused on evidence-based programs that will help our young men and boys of color. Um, and so today, uh, she's going to make some exciting announcements. And tomorrow, we're all going to work together to make sure that we can achieve them. Uh, let me acknowledge um, and introduce to some of you our new Deputy Mayor for Education, Jenny Niles. Jenny, give a wave so everybody can see you. 
and principal, uh, your students look great, energized, and ready, and I want to thank you for our leadership. I know I speak for the chancellor and Jenny in saying this. We can put together best laid plans, right? Uh, we can go to the city council, and I want to acknowledge all the council members who have joined us. Our oversight chair for education is at-large council member David Garasso. I also want to acknowledge the Ward 7 Council Member Yvette Alexander. And a new member of the Council, at large Council Member and Birthday Girl, as it turns out, Alyssa Silverman. Give her a round of applause. And I want to thank all of you because when I see the, the people around this room, I know that we, we have an army. We have an army with us. Thank you very much. Am I introducing somebody next? Okay. Yes, my dear, come on up. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Uh, I'm honored to uh, be standing here and presenting you all the speech that I'm about to give you. And this is my first time ever giving a speech, so I hope you all enjoy uh, the speech. Hola, yo soy Dylan Rivera. Soy un estudiante de octavo grado en la escuela de Lincoln. Hi, my name is Dylan Rivera and I'm an eighth grade student at Lincoln Multicultural Middle School, which is a part of Columbia Heights Education Campus. And I'm bilingual. Uh, Czech has taught me the power of being bilingual in today's society and all students at Czech are on the path to becoming bilingual. In fact, a bilingual curriculum has helped to build a unity between African American and Latino students at Czech. I'm really committed to my success in school right now and I have good grades, but I want to improve them even more. I really enjoy my English class because it has helped me to expand my vocabulary and will help me reach my goal of becoming a psychologist. And also I participate in extracurricular activity activities, like for example, I'm a member of the DC score soccer team and I'm, and I'm the captain of the team. And and also I'm in the middle school eighth grade band and the instrument I play is the tenor saxophone. So, yeah. <laughs> so last year as a seventh grader, my counselor, Mr. Morrell, told me that he was gonna put me in the college program because he believed that I was capable of achieving many things. And that summer, I actually took the classes in uh, UDC, which stands for University of District of Columbia. And well, even though the classes were a bit hard, you know, I still managed to complete the task and, you know, earn a good amount of experience knowing how the campus was in all of its insides. And his words had inspired me and I began to think all of the possibilities I had now. But before it was very hard to get motivated, but now I decided I'm going to college and I aim to be the best. Now I have determination to succeed, so therefore failure is not an option for me. Me voy a graduar de la universidad. I'm going to graduate college. Thank you. Uh, Chancellor Henderson is a model to all of us who want to succeed. Her education career began as a middle school Spanish teacher in the South Bronx. As Chancellor, Ms. Henderson is committed to holding all students to high expectations, providing them with the access to high quality teachers and leaders, and creating the most rigorous and innovative instructional environments to ensure their success. Please help me to welcome Chancellor Kaya Henderson. That wasn't too bad for a first speech, huh? Give Dylan another round of applause. Good morning. Um, I am proud and energized uh, to be here today among so many friends from across this great city. 
I want to thank you to Mayor Bowser for joining us to kick off this announcement um, and for her clear vision around the importance of this work. We're at a historic point at DCPS. We are the fastest improving urban school district in the country. Just last week, uh, we hosted U.S. Secretary of Education Arne Duncan at a press conference at Seton Elementary School where once again he highlighted DCPS as a model of where we're making great progress. Our students are doing better than ever in reading and math. More of our classrooms are led by highly effective teachers. More students are graduating on time, attendance is up, truancy is down, student satisfaction is high, and we're continuing to push that. Um, and our enrollment has increased. We have over 1,200 new students this year alone, which means more families are choosing DCPS. But with all this tremendous progress, we still have so much more work to do. There are far too many students who have not yet fully benefited from all the progress that we're making. Even though our proficiency rates have climbed overall, there's a considerable gap in achievement between our black and Latino male students and their peers. The academic performance of these students is simply not high enough, and it's not rising fast enough. So today, we're here to announce that we're resolving to turn this very real and very urgent problem around. While the data draws our attention to just how important this issue is, it doesn't tell the whole story. It misses the story of the brilliance, resilience, strength, creativity, courage, and hard work that our many young men employ every day to successfully navigate the many obstacles in their path to success. The terrible numbers about the gap don't tell the story of students like Avery Coffey, a Banneker High School alum, who was accepted to five Ivy League colleges last year. <laughs> Avery is now a freshman at Harvard University studying economics, and he's loving every part of his experience. The data that tells us that our young people are doing so poorly doesn't reflect the story of students like Larnell Hardy, a senior at McKinley Technology High School, who had an internship at Microsoft this summer, where he developed three online gaming applications that are available on the Windows App Store right now. In fact, Larnell and three of his McKinley Tech buddies have launched their own gaming company with support from Microsoft in 1776, and they are developing and selling video games that they've designed right now while they're finishing high school. The statistics that paint such a terrible picture miss stories of students like scholar-athlete Dewan Green, who's a wide receiver for the Eastern High School varsity football team. Just, last, just this fall, Dewan helped lead his team to victory in the state championship game against Sidwell Friends and was recognized this, as this year's most valuable player. He's also a basketball point guard and a baseball shortstop. And off the field, he's on track to enter college and begin pre-med studies, preparing him for his dream career as a pediatrician. <laughs> These incredible stories about our incredible students, including students like William and Dylan, force us to step back from the typical doom and gloom narrative and remind us that if we can do it for Avery and Larnell and Dewan and William and Dylan, we can figure out how to do it for all of our young men of color. The Empowering Males of Color initiative is built on proven practices that draw on students' strengths, not their deficits, giving our young people the tools to succeed. Our aim is to put forth solutions that replicate what's working and scale these solutions to benefit all of our young men. You see, this work is not only my professional duty, it's also deeply personal to me. I'm not educating somebody else's kids. I just graduated one young African-American male from McKinley Technology High School, and I have a third grader at J.O. Wilson Elementary School. 
These are my kids. In fact, every student in this city matters to me. Everything that I do as chancellor of DCPS is about ensuring that all students in all parts of the city attend schools that help them learn, grow, and thrive. The power of equality is the basic understanding that we all have purpose and we're all deserving. We must be relentless in our pursuit of equity for our African American and Latino young men. In 2010, we established the Capital Commitment, our five-year plan to hold ourselves accountable for achieving this mission. And we are making steady progress towards those five goals. But 2017 is quickly approaching and the math is clear. With black and Latino males collectively representing the majority of students in DCPS, 43%, we simply cannot reach our student achievement goals without developing new tools and strategies to expand opportunities for our young men of color. To lead our Empowering uh, Males of Color initiative, I searched all across the country to find the best person for the job. Dr. Robert Simmons, a nationally recognized expert on urban education and the education of males of color, um, agreed to join us. Dr. Simmons joined DCPS this past summer to establish the Office of Innovation and Research with a laser-like focus on addressing this issue. Prior to joining DCPS, Dr. Simmons was the founding director of the Center for Innovation in Urban Education at Loyola University, Maryland, and associate professor of urban education and African American studies. Additionally, he was a middle school science teacher and an administrator in Minnesota and the Dominican Republic, and he's from Detroit, so you know how he rolls. Dr. Simmons is the lead architect of empowering our Empowering Males of Color initiative and I'm beyond grateful for his leadership of this very critical work. He's here today to share with you our strategy to improve, expand, and transform the educational experiences of our young men of color. To deliver on this promise, we will invest $20 million, let me say that again, $20 million in public and private funds over the next three years to support the Empowering Males of Color initiative. And now that I have your attention, I want you to join me in welcoming Dr. Simmons to walk you through the details of our plan. I'm honored to uh, be here um, and hear the stories of these young men because that's why we do this work. Uh, that's why I became a teacher when I left my home in Detroit. And I want to acknowledge the support of Mayor Bowser for her uh, line in the sand to say we need to do this collectively and do this together. Uh, the chancellor for her vision uh, for putting a stake in the ground on this issue. Uh, the other day I was watching the movie Selma and was called back to the stories my mother told me about her time as a student at Spelman of doing things collectively and seeing them collectively, those black, white, brown, the SCLC, SNCC, collectively march across that bridge. I'm here today to challenge us to do this work collectively. This isn't a Robert Simmons thing. This isn't a Mayor Bowser thing. This isn't a Kaya Henderson thing. This isn't even a President Obama thing. This is our thing. This is the thing that we have to do collectively. As a part of this work, I want to be clear that when I first arrived this summer, uh, I met with uh, Ken Slaughter, who uh, has been a mentor of mine. But I also would be remiss if I didn't mention my chief of staff, Ernell Holland, who is not just my chief of staff, but a thought partner in this work. And that's where we started, sitting with the chancellor, sitting with the management team. It wasn't just us in a room writing on pieces of paper. We spent countless hours reviewing data, looking at things that were working. The wonderful curriculum work that Brian Pick does, the wonderful work in human capital that Jason Cameras does, all of the leadership in DCPS has been doing great things. But what are the things that we could do better? And so as we started this work, we wanted to identify short and long-term goals and strategies that were tailored to specific grade bands. So in our theory of action, we'd like to engage, improve, and innovate. 
So with this theory of action, I also want to be clear that when we look at this narrative of failure, failure that's attributed to, to, to far too many young men of color in schools, that is a false premise. In DCPS, we stand in solidarity with those who suggest that there is nothing wrong with the boys and young men of color in Washington, D.C. What we stand to say is that the young men in our schools and in our community, we want them to be successful inside and outside of the classroom. They are the future scholars, critical intellectuals, and leaders of this community. As we reject this deficit perspective, which is fundamentally flawed in so many ways, the boys are not the problem. We simply are not doing enough as a community, as schools, and as leaders to empower them, to support them, to engage them as critical thinkers of the world. So as we think about our theory of action, our first thing is we are going to engage the community as partners in this movement. This is a movement of change. We've engaged various sectors in the community. We've met with many of the ed councils. We've worked with Jenny Niles in the mayor's office. We've met with the parent cabinet. I've stood outside of schools and just talked to young brothers coming outside of school. I'm, that's not official data collection, but it certainly provides evidence that we need to do something different. As we also look to improve, we're going to expand on things that we're already doing, such as our collaboration with reading partners. The third thing that we're going to do is that we're going to innovate. And the innovation is going to require us to think very deeply about our most important students that are facing the most significant challenges, our boys and young men of color. To this end, as we look at what we're going to do, our core number one strategy is really reimagining our Proving What's Possible grants. So as the chancellor mentioned, and she got everyone's attention, she got my attention when she mentioned this, that we're going to invest $20 million of public and private dollars into uh, this effort. A portion of those funds will be dedicated to proving what's possible grants. And proving what's possible grants have existed in the school system for quite some time under the chancellor's leadership, and we've had great success in this effort. As we look at this new iteration of the grants, we're going to make sure that they are going to stay the same as they have a laser-like focus of supporting schools, our wonderful leaders in our schools, and the magnificent teachers in Washington, D.C. But what will be different is that we want to actually seed innovation in a three-year process to give school leaders to give teachers an opportunity to be reflective about what's working, to be thoughtful about what is not working, so that we can make course corrections, not just continue to do the same thing over and over and over again. So as we tweak this process and we tweak the proving what's possible focus, we want to make it clear to the community and those who we collaborate with and those who we walk this journey with. Number one, Proving what's possible will have a laser-like focus on academic en enhancement as well as academic enrichment. Number two, we recognize, and the chancellor has said this over and over and over again, our students are not just data points on a graph. But we also want to ensure that we're supporting their social and emotional development. So that's the second part of what our uh, Proving What's Possible grant will focus on. The third will be family and community engagement because this isn't work that we can do by ourselves. We have to do it in collaboration with families and community. The second core strategy is the launching of an all-male college prep high school. We have our friends from Urban Prep Academy here uh, from Chicago, and I'll introduce Tim King uh, later, and he will talk briefly about uh, his efforts. This school will launch in the fall of 2016, east of the Anacostia River. We are looking forward to engaging the community and students and staff on recruitment issues, the development of strategic partnerships, and a variety of, of other things that go into opening a school like this. A large portion of this planning has already begun. We will also begin the process, and we will have a principal. I want to be clear, the chancellor was very clear when she said this to me, we will have a principal who will partner with us and work with us this summer, and they will be have a, a planning year to uh, work on the details. 
as I'm, yeah, thank you. And again, Tim King will speak to some of the details and the particulars. The third thing is perhaps most critical immediately is mentoring. Throughout this great nation, people have suggested that all of the things they learned in life came through a mentor, a parent, a friend, in my case, the bus driver as I rode to school. And so we are going to focus on 500 for 500, mentoring through literacy. As this is one of the most important strategies of our initiative, it's going to address both the academic needs and the social emotional development of our males of color. There's a well-documented connection between literacy and success in the world, and we all recognize that reading and writing are gateway skills to other subject areas and things that you want to do in life. We've joined forces with some of the best literacy organizations in the District of Columbia, including Reading Partners, Reach Inc., and the Literacy Lab. Through this approach, we will train committed volunteers and connect them with struggling readers to help them build strong literacy skills, gain confidence, and discover a passion, not just for reading, but also writing. You'll hear more from the chancellor and uh, the mayor about how to get involved in just a few moments. So the other pieces of this are going to uh, really revolve around our theory of action where we engage, improve, and innovate. In this work, we're also going to focus on the recruitment of more black and Latino teachers. We're also, thank you. We're also going to have a laser-like focus on early childhood development uh, with African-American Latino males through a partnership uh, with Head Start, whereby we're not just providing professional development to teachers, but making sure that we're working in collaboration with those young folks' parents, because we're all doing this together. The last piece, and I still want to hammer home this college prep single gender school for boys. College prep, okay? So as we move forward, uh, we're also going to recognize the success of our young people through a, si a signing day. But we also want to encourage people to participate in this effort as we have a recognition ceremony for young men of color in our school district who are improving and thriving. This young brother going to UConn, have Avery at Harvard, we have so many young people who are making it in DCPS. We want to acknowledge that and not just dwell on the negative statistics. <laughs> Lastly, in order to be truly successful in this work, we must change the culture around how we examine and utilize our data. To address this, we have developed an equity scorecard. This scorecard is focused on the six key measures of success. We will use this data to help inst make instructional decisions. We're going to also use it to help inform policy decisions, but also a shift in culture and attitudes. As the chancellor has clearly articulated, when we see improvements in our early literacy rates, our improved attendance, and our graduation rates, we will know that we have done the work that we will put here on this earth to do for our students. In closing, I want to go back to the movie Selma. This is a collective movement. This is not DCPS taking this on by ourselves. We need you. We need the community. We need city council. We need the local nonprofits. We need the students in the back with ties on. We need you to help us make this happen. I want to again give thanks to Mayor Bowser for her um, support of this effort, the Chancellor's uh, vision, and I also would like to introduce uh, Maria Takeva, the uh, principal at Columbia Heights Educational Campus. Good morning. And thank you for this opportunity to share my excitement about the Empowering Males of Color Initiative. At Check, we are a middle and high school serving 1,380 students, half of whom are males and all of whom are young males of color.
60% are Latino, 35% are African American, 3% are African, and 2% are Asian. Our mission for the past 35 years has been to prepare 100% of our students to succeed in college. We have had many successes, however, we still see gaps for our young men of color, which we are determined to close. And this initiative is wonderful news for all of us in the schools. All the elements that you've heard about are things that we really, really need in our schools. But some of those that I think will make a big difference for us in schools are the collaboration with government agencies. We know that there's so many resources in our city, and it's really just our task through this to pull them all together in a unified fashion so we can have a really strong safety net for our young people. Awarding funds to schools with promising approaches. There are many small-scale things going on in all of our schools that are addressing the needs of young men of color, but with this, we'll be able to study what works, to replicate what works, and to try to bring them to scale. As Mr. Simmons mentioned, launching a teacher recruitment to attract more teachers of color to our schools. This is a huge and critical need that we in the schools would welcome. I just wanted to share a couple of the things that we've been doing that we hope to be able to expand even further through this initiative. We pull apart our data all the time. We're always trying to see where are the gaps because you can't close gaps unless you know the root cause for it. And we use this data to have difficult conversations with our teachers about cultural competence and how they can build their competence. We also, through the dual immersion program, which Dylan spoke about, are really increasing the opportunities for all young men to become bilingual, not just our Latino young men who are learning English, but our African-American young men who also should have the right to become bilingual and all the access that goes with that. We also believe in absolutely no tracking of any kind. So we don't only encourage, we require all of our students to take AP English in the 11th and 12th grade. English language learners, special needs students, everybody takes it and everybody has the opportunity to take any AP that they want. We also believe in response to intervention, which is another initiative that's happening in the schools on another track, but that fits right into this. So we have a very strong mental health program where our young men are actually now self-referring for social emotional services that they can get. And we want to expand this so that this has become self-empowerment instead of another kind of approach. So in conclusion, I would love to thank Mayor Bowser, Chancellor Henderson, and her team for shining the light on this very critical need and this major issue of social justice. We in the schools look forward to teaming with you in this wonderful effort. Thank you very much. Um, Maria is one of our longest serving and most effective principals in DCPS. Um, yeah, you can give her a hand. But she's not the only amazing school leader that we have, and I'm really pleased to see a number of DCPS principals in the house. And so if you are one of my amazing DCPS principals, will you please stand, wave, show the people who you are. There are elementary school principals, middle school principals, high school principals. There are principals from west of the park and east of the river. I mean, these people could be in their schools doing something else, but they came here today to because, as Mayor Bowser said, we can put all the plans together that we want. But these are the people who actually make it happen. These are the real heroes of DCPS. Um, before Mayor Bowser and I close this thing out, um, I want to invite one other person to speak, and I just want to say a little something about him. Um, Tim King, who is the CEO or founder or something, big head honcho, of Urban Prep Academies in Chicago, um, is running probably one of the most important educational experiences for young men of color in this country. Um, Tim runs three schools in Chicago um, that are focused on African-American boys and their ability to go to college. And 100% of the young people that he graduates go on to college. Yeah. 
And Tim is not, Tim and his team are not taking the bestest children in the whole wide city of Chicago, right? They are dealing with the knuckleheads. They're dealing with the children who don't know that they're on their way to college yet, but they see it as their job to make sure that they recognize that and get them on track. And so in our quest to really provide the District of Columbia with the very best, um, it was pretty clear that we should go see Tim King. It just so happens that I knew Tim in a previous life. Just last year, when we were undergraduates at Georgetown University, uh, Tim... <laughs> Tim was actually my big brother. Um, I was a freshman and Tim is a senior, was a senior. And he was assigned to mentor me um, as I made my way at uh, Georgetown University. And I'm really pleased that I was able to call on that relationship um, and go to Chicago and check out Urban uh, Prep Academy. And let me be very clear, everybody in the country wants Urban Prep Academy to come and open a school in their city or in their town or with them. And I went out to Chicago, and I saw the magic, and I was like, oh, you need to come to D.C. And Tim and his team were like, yeah, no, that's all right. We're good in Chicago. We're just going to keep on doing what we're doing. I said, look, just come visit D.C. for a day. And if you're not impressed with what we're doing at DCPS, then you go back and you keep doing your thing in Chicago. And so we had Tim and his team out for a day this August. Um, we sent, showed them a couple of schools, talked about what we were trying to do with young men of color. Um, and Tim and his team jumped at the opportunity and said, we want to partner with you to figure out how to make something work in Washington, D.C. Um, so I'm proud that we are now able to attract of the most amazing talent in the nation to help us do this work. Join me in welcoming the incomparable Tim King. I don't think there's anything I can say after that. Thank you, Chancellor. Um, I'm grateful um, for that introduction and very, very happy and mostly excited to be here. I've got some prepared remarks that I'm going to read and hopefully they'll be able to show you how excited I am about this opportunity and what we're um, planning on doing with DCPS. In, in 1990, while taking night classes at Georgetown Law School, I began teaching high school in Northeast DC. Little did I know that 25 years later, I'd be back in the city where my education career started sharing in this amazing day with you and announcing plans to bring Urban Prep Academy for Young Men to Washington, D.C. When we opened our first campus almost 10 years ago, our goal was clear. Increase the number of urban males earning college degrees. A lofty goal, but not any more ambitious or any less achievable than the goal of the Empowering Males of Color Initiative. I know what Mayor Browser and Chancellor Henderson are setting out to do is achievable because we've seen what an investment in and a laser focus on young males of color can do. We've seen with critical thinking and literacy at the core of Urban Prep's curriculum and our focus on social emotional development that linking reading and mentoring actually does work. Urban Prep not only has achieved a 100% college acceptance rate for all of our graduates, unheard of for non-selective public schools serving low-income minority males, but our graduates have daily attendance, graduation, college enrollment, and college persistence rates that far exceed their counterparts. Students may start at Urban Prep behind. This year, not a single entering ninth grader was reading beyond the sixth grade level they may start behind, but they finish where they're supposed to, in college. In fact, last fall, one in nine African-American males enrolling in college as freshmen from Chicago Public Schools was an urban prep graduate. One in nine. And our commitment to our students doesn't stop when they graduate from high school. Our innovative alumni program provides support for our graduates to help them get to and through college. Alumni like David Peake, who for a period of time in high school was homeless and would actually sit on the cold floor in the shelter, bathroom, doing his homework because it was the only place there that had the lights on past 10 p.m. 
He made it through urban prep. He made it through high school. He graduated valedictorian and now is a student at Georgetown University. And actually, he stopped by here today. David, please raise your hand. Mr. Peake never gave up on himself, and we never gave up on him. And our promise to Washington, D.C. is that we will not give up on your students either. With the mayor, chancellor, students, parents, teachers, residents, all of you in our nation's capital as our partners, it is this type of commitment, this type of school we plan to bring to the Washington, D.C. The urban prep motto is we believe. And let me tell you, the work of Mayor Bowser and Chancellor Henderson, the empowering Males of Color Initiative, and Urban Prep, Washington, D.C. campus, or UPDC, <laughs> are really what happened when we believe. Thank you for welcoming us here today. Well, as you can see, the chancellor has indeed laid out an excellent vision. Let's hear it for our chancellor of schools. All of the school leaders who are here and all of the community members who are here who will work with every agency of our government uh, to support our schools in this initiative. As I was sitting there, I like numbers. Mr. Dr. Simmons gave us the numbers, 500 for 500, and thinking of how we can challenge our community, but also challenge all of the wonderful people in our government who can be part of that 500 for 500 to make sure our children have literacy mentors. I think I can do that. I think I could do that, Chancellor. So sign me up. I'm one of the 500 that can, that can do that. And I, I, I just, I think that what we've seen here is a very discreet set of goals that are achievable. Um, so I tell everybody, I'm that mayor who has practical plans, bold and practical. They have to be achievable and they have to be fundable. Right, Chancellor? Yes, sir. Right, David Grosso? All right, so we're going to get there. So that's our, that's our challenge and our call to action today as we leave, not just to talk about the challenges, but to make sure that we're putting our shoulder to the wheel to get them done, um, because our young people are indeed deserving. I've had the opportunity over the last uh, several weeks to host a couple of meetings with about 100 boys from across the city, and I'm telling you how impressed I am um, with what they are saying about what they need. And the chief thing that I left with was that they want positive adults who have made it to tell them how they can make it too. Um, and so being involved, one person, you just don't realize the impact you can have in a young man's life. So think about how you can get involved. Chancellor. That's right. Our young people need you. People ask me all the time, how can I help? I'm excited about where DCPS is going. Um, and today we have a very specific ask. You can help by signing up today to be a literacy mentor, one of our 500 for 500. We have partners who are ready to train you for those people who are a little worried about it. Um, and we'll support you every step of the way. And it's easy to sign up. You can sign up at www.emoc, empowering males of color, dc.org. Is it on the thing? All right, great. Um, our goal is to recruit 500. And this is so that we ensure that our boys of color master early literacy. We're calling on African American and Latino men specifically to step up as mentors. But we need the help from everybody who can give it. In fact, um, the Federal City Alumni Chapter of Delta Sigma Theta has already signed up 25 mentors, and their list is growing by the day. The Alliance of Concerned Black Men and the United Way of the National Capital Area and a host of other organizations are recruiting mentors for us right now and collaborating with us on this initiative. 
I also want to recognize a few other partners who are in the room today. And if their representatives are here, will you stand and wave in solidarity with us? Um, we have amazing literacy partners, reading partners, higher achievement, Reach, Inc., and the Literacy Lab, who will help us in this important endeavor. Raise your hand, stand up, literacy partners. Thank you for being here. We have great community partners like the United Way of the National Capital Area, the Alliance of Concerned Men, Delta Sigma Theta, Big Brothers and Big Sisters, Mentors, Inc., Life Pieces to Masterpieces, and one of our most important, one of our most important partners, the DC Trust. And I want to ask Ed and Bomani to stand and thank them for all their support. This is just the beginning of our efforts to solidify partnerships and recruit volunteers. So if you're interested in joining us, just sign up at emocdc.org. And you've heard that our, about our ambitious plans, and we have a lot to accomplish in a very short amount of time. So we're raising $20 million with the help of our partners at the DC Public Education Fund, where Jessica Rauch is the executive director. Now, Jessica and I are going to be calling on you and asking for some money. Don't hide from us. Don't not take our call. Um, we're, gonna, we're coming to call for a financial contribution. Don't run from the call. Our boys need you. I'm confident that this investment in our African-American and Latino young men of color will pay off for all of our students and for the entire city. The mayor and I look forward to working together with all of our residents to end this disparity and to build a system and a city worthy of every single one of the brilliant young minds that inhabit it. Together, we'll go farther, faster. Thank you. I'm going to take a couple of questions from reporters. Um, I know the mayor's schedule is very packed today, um, so we'll just do a couple of things, a couple of quick questions from reporters. And if other friends have questions, we will happily answer those um, after this portion um, concludes. Excuse me. $20 million. Is this all private funds? It'll be a combination of public and private funds. We've put out $20 million in asks. Um, we expect that we'll be able to raise it, but we also have some public funds that we're designating for the initiative. Does that uh, uh, include creating a school? Is that yep, part of it? Yeah, absolutely. It includes so creating a school. That will be a big part of it, absolutely. But school or ground up, brand spanking new. So we, we know for sure that we want the location to be east of the Anacostia River because we believe that that's where we'll need to serve the most students. We haven't finalized a location yet, but we're looking. My other question was, are you taking reporters as mentors? I would love to have reporters as mentors, absolutely. <laughs> the student population of this um, all-male school, and would you refresh our memory about the advantage of having just boys in a school, the all-male education? Yeah, I'll ask my friend Tim, who's an expert on that, to come field that question. Um, but we're looking at and planning for a small high school of about 500 young men. Uh, and so 
Um, I think we'll, we're flexible enough to figure out. We've heard people say, oh, well, if you open a high school, you need to also open an all-boys middle school and whatnot. And I think we have, we'll hold hands and be partners and figure out what the right thing is at the right time. Um, but right now we're looking at a small high school for 500 young men. I'll let Tim talk about the benefits of an all-male education. Sure, thanks. There are a lot of uh, folks out there who believe in this brain, what's called brain research, that says that boys and girls learn differently. Um, we don't happen at Urban Prep to be strong proponents of this idea. We think that children learn, and the best way to educate them is to provide them with an education or a structure that meets their needs. So the biggest advantage of a single-gender school, whether it be an all-boys school an all, or an all-girls school, is that you're able to have a laser focus on the type of student or the population you're serving, and in doing so, can create a curriculum and an environment that more closely meets the needs of the student population. And we've accomplished that at Urban Prep over the course of uh, the eight years we've been open because, frankly, we can get to know our students, understand what their needs are, and then tailor or a curriculum and a program that really, really focuses on them. Uniforms? The urban prep schools in Chicago do have uniform requirements. So would that be, would it be, um, first of all, would it be a campus of urban prep or would you be a consultant for DCPS to open it? And would it be a magnet school or a charter school? So... We're working out the details, um, but we expect it to be a DCPS school. Um, we expect to try to give... Uh, Tim and his team as many autonomies and flexibilities as they need to make it work the way they've made it work in Chicago, and we might need to call on our city council colleagues to help with that. Um, but no, it'll be a DCPS school. Um, we may, we'll probably arrange it the way we've arranged some of our other partnership schools where we allow them to run the school however they want. I'm not trying to mess with success. We called Tim in because he knows what to do and how to do it. And so I want to give him the school and let him do what he needs to do to provide the best for our young men. Boarding or day school? Day school. Day school. Any other important questions? One once. Great. Thank you all for coming. And I just want to, I mean, all around the room are the faces of young men of color. Uh, we have our boys from Baloo who are dressed in their Baloo blue looking handsome and fine. There are... There are the young men of Phelps in the back um, who are doing amazing things. Um, <clears throat> Phelps is a sleeper. There are a lot of people who don't know about the great things going on at Phelps. And all around the room, there are the young men of color who we um, owe the very best education to. And as you leave, make sure that you shake a brother's hand, that you encourage them and let them know that you're in this with us as we work to provide them with an excellent education. Thank you so much for coming today.